All right, so in this video, I'm going to cover how to install the Project Freefall source onto an existing UDK um, build. I suggest that everybody start with a fresh UDK build, but if you haven't uh, added any scripts to the current build of UDK that you have, this might work. But if you don't match the version number of UDK that Project Freefall is currently on, you may have issues. Maybe. So you might try it anyhow, it might work, but I would highly recommend using the exact build that I'm using, because it'll work. So currently Project Freefall is using the UDK 2012-01 January build. I will keep everybody updated on the download page with uh, what builds and what source releases, like what source releases relate to what builds of UDK. So but I'll keep everybody posted is the deal. But for now, use the January build, which I'll link to. And this is just a standard install. I'm starting fresh just because this is what everybody will be doing anyways. And so this, once the install is done, this actually will go rather quickly. There's actually not, it's not too many steps involved with getting this to work. Um, Getting it to work is the easy part. I will go over afterwards. There are a couple key details related to map making that need really need to be um, remembered by anybody who's developing maps for Project Freefall. They mainly have to relate to gravity volumes and uh, physics volumes. There, it'll be, it should be quick. I'm going to try and keep this video as short as possible. Now, while this is installing, for anybody who's interested as to why I'm releasing the source code now, um, you can thank Fixius, Fixius, what, um, however he likes his name pronounced. Apparently he's got a map that he'd like to test skiing on, and I tried, um, I tried just making a test map and then copying it to the current Freefall install and trying to get it to work through the console, but I couldn't get it to work, so I was like, eh, whatever, I'll just release the source. Um, with that said, this is a full source release, uh, along with all the assets I have as well. Um, for anybody interested in the source code, go ahead, look at it. Uh, as, I mean, many people have shown interest in just seeing how I did it for the sake of research. But understand that this, this is my code. Um, I'd rather you not steal it and try and pass it off on as your own project uh, for like a college project or something like that. I mean, there's very little I can do to stop you, but I, it's, I don't, there, there might be one person who's considering it. But anyhow, at that point, anybody who's interested on uh, building off the existing code, um, bear in mind that the code's going to change a lot. So if you build off of the code, do so with the idea that this it probably won't work in the future. It'll probably need some work. So this is finished installing. I'm not going to launch UDK because I need to copy some files first, but if you've already launched UDK and you're not going off of a fresh build, don't worry about it. It should work anyways. So this is where we use the zip file you should have downloaded. Copy it to the root directory of your UDK and then extract. And you'll get uh, just yes to all. This is just overriding some scripts that exist. And this is why you want to use a build of UDK where you have not made any new scripts. Because uh, Project Freefall will alter some scripts, pretty base scripts in the game. Uh, Pawn and then some other scripts that tend to be used in pretty much every game that's made off of UDK. So this is why I recommend using a fresh build. But if you're not somebody who mods, who just, if you're just a mapper that doesn't really touch the script files, then don't worry about it. You should be able to install. Now, with these extracted, there's only one more step you need to do. Go into your binaries folder and search for Unreal Frontend. Now, you want to do go to scripts and do a full recompile. And you may be wondering, well, why am I coming into the front end? I could just start up UDK and it'll rebuild the scripts anyhow. Well. It will, but the problem is, is it won't rebuild all of the scripts. You remember I mentioned that some of the fundamental scripts have been replaced, and because I just copied them in, 
UDK actually does not notice the difference. So it won't actually build those and there'll actually be some build errors. So you have to use Unreal front end and do a full rebuild of the script before UDK will work with Project Freefall. Now with that done, UDK is set up for Project Freefall already. So this is the one I most recently installed. And this is where things go rather quickly. I'm not going to make any complex map or anything like that. I'm just going to take this current one. And you'll notice there's already a different HUD. This is because some of the assets that have been copied in actually replace the base UDK HUD uh, completely. So that's actually another thing is if you have custom HUDs or something like that, I would suggest installing a different version of like a separate UDK just for Project Freefall because this will replace the HUD. Um, but as you can see, although I have the Project Freefall HUD, I'm playing with Unreal Tournament um, weapons and game mechanics. So this is this won't work. So here's the, the number one keynote: do not press Escape to get out of the editor window. Always exit in console. This is because escape is currently bound to disconnect, and when you disconnect in the editor, it crashes the editor. Um, we'll sort that out at some future date, because it is rather annoying, but do remember that, or it, the number one thing is really, before you press the play button, save the map. That's a good rule of thumb. Now, to get, a, get, to get this map working as a Project Freefall map, you simply need to find the world info actor, Go to the properties and then game type and then your plan editor here we go so here are the two game types currently um, working we've got deathmatch and ctf i'm just going to set it to deathmatch because deathmatch works with the base match or the base map rather um, now the default game type that works in the actual game and then this is obviously plan editor for anybody who doesn't know I'm just going to close that, press play. Now you notice the first thing you'll notice is in the upper right, you'll see the units second now read zero. This means that Project Freefall is actually running properly. You notice now that I have jetpacks and I have a speedometer. But one thing you'll notice now is when I fall, I'll reach a speed limit, which will restrict my falling speed. You'll see here in a second. Bam. Notice I hit 4,000 ups and then I didn't gain any more speed. So, the this is where the gravity volume and physics volume come in handy. So, exit. And what we're going to do is add a volume. And what I, this is a habit I always have whenever I'm making a map for Project Freefall. Before I do anything, I always drag the Builder Brush to the dead center of the map set my drag grid to one, go to scaling, and then I scale the builder brush up to be the size of the map. Now I'm going to add volume, and then you want gravity volume. A gravity volume is a physics volume appended with gravity, so it's a two-part deal. Now again, if we open up the find actors, you'll see the gravity volume properties. Now, the first thing is you'll notice that gravity is 520. You may have noticed in the previous video, I'll play. I'll just press play again. You'll notice that Project Freefall feels rather floaty at the moment. This is because gravity is about half what all of the demos have been. Um, so to fix this, Project Freefall currently uses 1000, negative 1000, as the gravity. And so, as you can see, now everything feels like it actually has some weight. Now, the gravity is bound to change, but a gravity in Project Freefall is likely always going to be quite high. Um, this is from multiple people I've talked with in the earlier stages of testing, where we messed around with gravity for a bit, and it came to the conclusion that higher gravity is better because it gives a uh, much greater contrast and speeds like for instance if you're at the top of a hill you have a far greater advantage when you're going down the hill with high gravity so it gives real incentive for players to actually use the terrain whereas low gravity 
tends to lessen the importance of reading terrain correctly. So we're not quite done yet because although gravity's fixed, you'll notice that I'll start falling and I'll hit the 4,000 unit cap. <clears throat> so let's fix that. Now, easily done. Set at 4,000. I've been setting it to 128,000. This is because the number is its high enough to be not feasible for a player to actually reach with under their own um, skill. It's more of a bug velocity. The top speed at the moment that seems feasible for players to reach is maybe about 20,000 ups. So 128,000 is overkill. But that's really all you need to do is you can set up the gravity and then set up the terminal velocity. And you've got a fully functioning Project Freefall map. I'll uh, go a little bit higher so you can actually see the new velocity changes work. You see I go past 4,000 and I get almost up to 6.5. So, let's see about... Boop. But anyhow, this is this is a working project freefall map at the moment. So uh, if anybody wants to do CTF, if you've done a Unreal Tournament CTF map, it is identical in Project Freefall. This is because Project Freefall CTF mode has built directly off of Unreal Tournament, and I have not changed any any of the fundamentals at all. So uh, for those of you who haven't done an Unreal Tournament CTF map, I will link uh, a video. I, there's a couple I believe I have bookmarked that are they're pretty quick to cover what you need to do. Um, I'll load up one of my maps. Oh crap, actually on this build I don't have it. So don't save. I'll open up the other build. The one that actually is current. So. And really, the only difference between making a deathmatch and a CTF map is the spawns you add. Uh, deathmatch, you can add the... You can pretty much add whatever spawn you want, whereas in CTF, you actually have to add a team spawn, and then you have to set the team um, numbers correctly to match the flags. And that's what I'll hopefully show you here in a moment. Close that. Open up... Uh, this is the late, latest map that I've been working on, and some of you have seen. So, actually, I'll just maximize this. Here we go. Here are a bunch of spawns. You can already kind of see they've got blue, but if I F4, this is the critical thing the team number. Um, for Blue, the team number is 1, and notice these are UT team player start, so that's the class that you use. And the team number is 1 for blue, and if I go over to the flag, or the, the flag spawn, you'll notice the team number should be, oh, never mind, this is uh, UT CTF blue flag base. If the team number is 1, it will match up with that, C, uh, that flag. So. Just keep that in mind. Uh, and so the same deal if I go over here, this is red team over here. You'll notice team number is zero. And then the flag, it should be UT CTF red or yeah, UT CTF red flag base. So that's that's all you have to do to get CTF working. Uh, those are the only two game types. As other ones are added, I'll of course make videos for them, but that should be enough for this video. Hopefully it hasn't been too long, and hopefully I've answered all your questions. Um, if I haven't, uh, if it's related directly to installing and getting Project Freefall to work, you might post it in the YouTube comments and I might be able to answer short enough, but I would highly recommend hopping on the forums, uh, mainly because on the forums, Others can help you along with, I can actually reply with longer than 500 character responses. Now, if the questions are related to the source code and more are like, how does such and such work? What does this line of code do? 
I, I, I'll, I'll make my best effort towards answering them, but those questions can quite often become very complicated very quickly. So definitely post those on the forums. The main reason being is that your question is likely a question somebody else has, and maybe I've already answered it, so somebody can help you already. But if not, then in the future, at the very least, it'll be there. So uh, that's it for this video. As always, thanks for showing interest in Project Freefall, and for everybody who's interested in modding at this point, that's great. Um, I'm quite happy to have anybody that's willing to work on it, considering it's you know a hobby project of mine that I'd rather like to see succeed, but it's still a hobby project at this point. Uh, I have been working on the new skiing. The issue right now is I have very little time for coding, but I have time to go over theory on how different implementations and how they might work. So pretty much at this point, all I need is I need a good chunk of time where I can just code and just crunch through different implementations until I find one that smooths out online movement. And once that's done, um, the next focus will be on replication. And this is why I tell everybody that's going to experiment with the source code itself, the scripts, to do so with an open mind. Understand that what you write is likely not going to work in the future. Um, so, and the main reason I want to focus on the replication code is because I want the record functionality to work. I believe at the moment it doesn't have actually, haven't actually tested it, but I'm almost 100% it doesn't work due to how hacked together the replication code is at the moment. But once replication is working, I want to make it to where a replication is never not working throughout the entire process. And this is mainly because being able to have demos is so important for testing or just game analysis really so that covers the install of the project freefall source and what's going on in the future um said thanks for watching if you have any question youtube page forums that's it for this video